Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Centered. It is good to be back home. I just want to say Happy New Year. And the... ...here at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. And the name of that teaching is Kingdom System. Kingdom System. Do you know that Jesus, before he ascended to the Father, before he even went on the cross, he was teaching on the kingdom of God for 40 days. Then when he went to hell and took the key off, the key of David off Satan's waist, uh, waist uh, he took off the key and he walked through the fire. And you know, son, when he came out of hell, he didn't even smell like smoke. Praise the Lord. He still had that fragrance that he always has, that aroma. Oh, I call it that wonderful cologne. I can't buy nowhere, not in Dillard's, not in Macy's. I, don't, I can't find that one. But praise the Lord. He, he, he had that fragrance. And then he taught another 40 days on the kingdom of God. I wonder why Jesus was emphasizing so much the kingdom of God. Well, let's find out. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and put our heart and mind unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, we come before you and we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for everything that we have. Forgive us when we have taken things for granted. You know, we're so focused on our problems and troubles that we forget to say thank you for the good things that we have. Lord, I just pray that this teaching will be a blessing to your body. And Lord, as the Holy Spirit reveals and teach me and, and other men of God how to conduct myself and teach this teaching called the kingdom system, Father, release it to them so they can receive it too. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. It is our custom as seen the Impossible Faith Center to give wonderful God a wonderful applause. Can we do that? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Praise you, Father. Amen. Well, let's open up our, uh, our journal, if you're going to take note. If not, then let's open up our Bibles and let's go to Matthew 6.10. Praise God. Matthew 6.10. And it's good to see each and every one of you here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love you, man. Praise God. Matthew 6.10, please. Matthew 6.10. Mm -hmm. That's good. Patty, that's good. You're listening to God. Amen. Okay. I'm going to read out of a New King James Version, please. When you're there, just give me a wonderful amen. Good. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus was saying his will is going to be done here on earth as it's done in heaven. Because Jesus, actually here in this, in this verse, he was really talking about the kingdom of God. He was revealing to his disciple how to live in the kingdom of God. Now, you thought the kingdom of God may be in heaven, but no, the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of heaven. God has a kingdom here, and that kingdom, it's not a geographic place, it's not a location, it's actually a system. And how can I find that system? I can find God's system, kingdom system, in my heart. That's where you find that system. Write that down. If you're taking notes, Jesus revealed to his disciple how to live in the kingdom of God, while they walk, walked and lived on earth. So we are walking and living on earth. So there's two types of system. There's the government system, the natural system, and then there's the kingdom of God system. 
as a Christian, as a believer, we've been living in the world system. See? Because we really not spiritual minded. We need to get spiritual minded. When you decided to uh, get closer to Jesus and serve Jesus and serve God, there was a spiritual transfer that took place. You went from the natural, from a natural person to a supernatural person or in other words, you went from a natural person to a spiritual person. So if you're going to have a relationship with a spiritual God, a spiritual Jesus, right? Can anybody touch Jesus in the physical? But you can touch Jesus in the spiritual. All right. And Jesus is always touching you. So and then if I'm going to have a relationship with a spiritual God, I have to learn how to walk and live and function in the spirit. All right? And um, so as Jesus revealed to his disciple how to live in the kingdom of God while they were in this earth, uh, he gave a lot of um, uh, principal keys and, 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 and he, those keys will help us how to operate in this system. <laughs> And, and truly, I'm going to tell you something. If you have Jesus in your heart, the reason why there's things missing in your life is because you, you've been trying to have a little bit of heaven and a little bit of earth. And it doesn't work that way. Either you put your total trust in the things of the Lord or you put your total trust in the natural. Another good scripture, now that we're in Matthew 6, let's go to verse 33, please. All right. In fact, you know what we need to do? Let's read. Let's read 25. Let's read verse 25, and then we'll get to 33, okay? 33 is our key. So let's read Matthew 6. Matthew 6. 25. Let's start with 25. This teaching is going to speak to a lot of you in the heart. Praise the Lord. Okay? Matthew 6, 25. You were in Matthew 6, 10 before. Praise the Lord. And when you're there, just say, Pastor, I'm there. Thank you. Bless your heart. Okay, here we go. The Bible reads like this. Now, you're reading probably out of the New Living Translation. I have to do this in the King James. But I'll go back and forth. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body and more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Wow. Are you not of more value than they? Verse 27. Which of you by wearing can add one cubit to, the, to his stature? <laughs> Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Verse 29. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like of one of those. Verse 30. Now if God so clothes, clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven or the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh you of little faith, if God takes care of everything that is surrounding you, everything that is surrounding you, God takes care of it. Won't God take care of you? Praise the Lord. Verse 31, 31 please. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows 
that you need all these things. Verse 32, let's, let's, let's stop right there for a second before we go to 33. That word Gentile there is not non-Jew. That word Gentile there means, don't you know that the people in the world who are godless are pursuing this? So he's saying, why are you pursuing this? You're not godless. You have a God. You need to be pursuing me. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. He says, you need to be pursuing me, and as you pursue me, I'm going to provide you with everything you need. Are you in trouble? I'll get you out of that trouble. Do you need food? Are you hungry? I'll get you the food. Come on, somebody. Do you need clothes? Well, I'll get you clothes. Do you need a pair of boots to work in the farm? Then I'll get you a pair of boots, and I'll take away those slippers that you've been praying to me if you only have boots. Especially when them rocks go into your, your, between your toes with them flip-flops. See, God provides. That's how the kingdom of God works. Now watch what he says in verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. Verse 34, please. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient, sufficient for the days it is own trouble. In other words, why are you acting like a person who doesn't have a God? You say praise the Lord, you say amen, you say you love Jesus, but you're thinking like a person that is, that is godless. And that's not good. Okay? So write this down. Our priority in life should be seek the kingdom of God first. That's where you get, that's where your money's at. Oh boy. That's where your answer is. That's where your health is. Come on, somebody. The reason why that thing trespass you is because you've been thinking about it once in a while. That's for somebody. That's for somebody. The reason why that trespass is because you've been thinking about it once in a while. You called it in. Good place to say amen. I mean, like, if, like you better listen to it like you're hearing it with, because you have to because it's your life depends on it. So don't be thinking about those things. When you think about it, you call it in. Don't think about it. Why are you worrying about that? You're calling it in to happen. And then, because some of us feel that, well, I know the word, I can say hallelujah, uh, I'm called to do this. Yes, you are called to do that. And yes, you do know the word. But you can't stop learning. Say that with me. I can't stop learning. So the first time something happens wrong to me or to somebody in my family, now I'm all messed up in the head. I'm all messed up in the head because I'm acting like a person that really don't know God. I have to put my faith totally in the Lord. I have to seek the kingdom of God. See, in that kingdom, there's a king in the throne. Either the king of darkness or the king of light. So when I take my focus off, can you do me a favor? See who that is? When I take my focus off the kingdom of light, I have my, the kingdom of my eyes on the kingdom of darkness. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So you're, you're stubborn this morning in the spirit. Praise the Lord, I said. If you want to come out of that funky era where you at, praise God. All right? I'd love to take you all there and show you what real poverty is. You'll be praising God and kissing that dirt. Amen, somebody? You got a home? You got a bed to go to? You got a car? How did you get here? By a donkey? You got here walking? No, you came here by car. So praise the Lord. And stop sitting there like you're so cute, like, mm, you know, I know this. You don't know this, because if you knew this, you'll start applying this into your life. I refuse to be sad. 
I refuse to be angry. I refuse to be confused. Somebody say amen. amen. I refuse it. I got to look after my health. You have to look after yours. He says in verse 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow worry about it itself, okay? Enjoy what you have today. Enjoy. No matter how, what it looks like you're facing, believe me, he's going to step in before you get to that place. All right? Now you can say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So your priority in life should be seek first the kingdom of God. And then you should seek his righteousness. So whatever is right for God, that's what you should be seeking. Not what's right for me. See, I'm going to do what's right for me. You hear that a lot, don't you? Don't you hear that a lot? I'm going to do what's right for me. I got to do what's right for me. That's the problem. You're sitting on that throne in the kingdom of God. You're telling you telling everybody around you, I'm going to do what's right for me. I need to be doing what's right in God's eyes. And God's a God of forgiveness, so stop beating yourself up, okay? You think God hasn't forgiven you? You're the one who hasn't forgiven yourself. So you walk around with a negative spirit, and you walk around with this, with this attitude that stinks. And you think nobody sees it, everybody sees it. So this morning, you need to get a hold of yourself and, 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 and put yourself in order, all right? This is your life. God ain't going to do it for you. You got to do it on your own. In order to make the kingdom of God work in my life, I have to put it first. I have to put it first. I cannot enter that kingdom of life that God has provided. God has provided a kingdom a kingdom of life, a life kingdom system, a God kingdom life system. So turn to your neighbor and say, you know what? Church going is not, it ain't got nothing going on. There's nothing going on going to church. It's living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, living for Jesus. Living for Jesus. When I come to church, this is my school, and I'm supposed to learn. But coming to church don't make me a Christian. It's like you living in the garage. You've heard me say that plenty of time. Makes you a car. You're just living in the garage. <laughs> you choose to. All right? So God wants to reveal some secrets of the kingdom of God. And how is he going to reveal these secrets? We're going to go into his word. His word is going to show us how to live in this system called the kingdom system. All right? So the first thing we need to do, we need to learn, write this down, please. We need to learn how to operate in the kingdom. I've never heard such a thing. So, Pastor, please teach me how to operate in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. In the kingdom. I need to, learn. I need to be happy. I need to be happy. I need to, to walk and, and enjoy my life. You know, praise the Lord. That's what you should be saying. I got a good life. In fact, say it. I got a good life. Thank you, Jesus. I got a good life. You know you do. You got wonderful children. You got wonderful wife. You got a, come on, you got wonderful people around you. Praise the Lord. At least when you get up in the morning, you know what you're going to do. There are people in other part of the world, they get up in the morning and they don't even know how they're going to survive. Because they ain't got no food. <coughs> Man, we, you know what you're going to do. Oh, I got to go to the doctor today. And this cocky attitude that we have. Oh, I got to do this today. I don't want to go there. And there's people in other part of the world that wish they had something to do. At least some of you have a business to go to. Some of you have a job to go to. Some of you, your business is at home. You're a mom, you're a wife. Come on now, praise the Lord. There's people that don't have that. They get up and they're just out there. At least you can put a candy in your mouth. At least you can buy something and, and put it in your mouth. Imagine not even having a nickel, not even a, 
Annie to do that. So we're going to seek the kingdom of God? I think that's a good idea. Let's seek the kingdom of God. So let's, uh, let's allow the Lord to reveal to us uh, his kingdom through the word of God. And then as he does that, we'll be able to operate in the kingdom of God. So let's go to Luke 12. Luke, the next book of, you're in Matthew, so you go one page over. Luke, all right, well actually two books over. Luke uh, 1232. I know exactly where I'm going to. Okay? Are you glad you came? Well, I'm glad you came too. It was so awesome, you know. I says, now I understand Jesus. He said his pulpit and his church was the world. There's so much work to do out there, man. It's, David, there's a lot of work out there. We'll train tomorrow, David. You know that. We start training now. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> okay, are you there? Okay. He says in Luke 12, 32, Do not fear, little flock, <laughs> for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus is talking to you. And he's saying, don't, re don't worry, little one. My father, your father, wants to give you the kingdom. He wants to give you the keys of the kingdom so that you can operate and live in that system. It's a system that allows you to walk in total health. It's a system that allows you to be sound-minded. It's a system that keeps you with an attitude of gratitude. You're not looking at what you're going through, what you don't have. You're looking at what you do have. So when you start looking at what you do have, then that opens the door to the things that you're going to get. See? Because attitude of gratitude opens the door for more. See, a good attitude attracts more. A bad attitude attracts less. Because no one is subject to be around your funky spirit. Okay? Stinky, smelly spirit. So we need a spirit adjustment. Somebody say, I need a spirit adjustment. I need a spirit adjustment. So it's going to take your, your mind, your mouth, and your heart to be adjusted so that you can have a better life and be able to go into the kingdom of God. Write this down for me, please. The kingdom of God is a system. It's God's system. The kingdom is a God system. Put it like that. The kingdom is a God system. Now I understand when he says the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is, is among you. Remember when Jesus said that? The kingdom of God is among you. John the Baptist, his cousin was saying, the kingdom of God is near. He's talking about Jesus. And the kingdom of God is in your heart. That's where the kingdom of God is. You can't grab a map. And, or Google it, because you're not going to find the address. It's inside your heart. Your heart is the, is the kingdom of God. Your heart, okay? Now, in that kingdom, there's a certain uh, uh, protocol. And let's go to Psalm 102. Psalm, please. Psalm 102. Thank you, Father. I love you and praise you. Psalm 102. Hmm. I love each and every one of you here, and, we, and I love you that are watching. I just want you to get it. Wow. Please, I know you can get it. It's my job to give it to you. Psalm 102, 102, and we're going to go to verse 22, please. 22, 22, and watch this. See, I'm going to show you that the kingdom is in your heart. See? Kingdoms, kingdoms come, kingdom, thank you, Lord, kingdom come to worship the Lord. That's very spiritual right there. Kingdoms. 
Say, I'm a kingdom. And then when we get together, we're kingdoms. When we get together, Carrie, we're kingdoms. You're a kingdom. Bobby's a kingdom. When you're together, you're kingdoms. And you know what's the purpose of a kingdoms? You know what the kingdoms do? They serve the Lord. They worship the Lord. So when the people, verse 22, when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Your translation, your living translation is to worship the Lord. To worship the Lord. To worship. So when Deacon Don and Mother Tina get together, Deacon Don's a kingdom and, and Mother Tina's a kingdom. So when they get together, now they're kingdoms. And the purpose is to worship the Lord. Worship who? Jesus, Dad. Say it. Jesus. So these kingdoms get together, I feel the Holy Spirit, to worship God, to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Deacon Roy, you look very distinguished with your beard. I like it. See, to worship the Lord. To worship the Lord. You're a kingdom, I'm a kingdom. Don't let somebody else's kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, sit in your kingdom. The reason why we go through so much problem, are you listening to me? It's because you let trespassers go into the kingdom of light. You're the kingdom of light. They're the kingdom of darkness. We can't hang out together, brother. I ain't following what you're doing. You're following what I'm doing. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So who's sitting on your throne? Are you sitting on your own throne? Is Satan sitting on your throne? <clears throat> That's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. The things is what you've been after. So who's sitting on your throne? Who's sitting on your chair? Things? Material thing? I need a new car. I need a new television. I need a new suit. I need a new wife. I need, I need, I need, I, 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 I. I don't like that kingdom. It stinks. I like for your kingdom to have roses, flower, and when you walk in that path in your kingdom, you can say, I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. You are responsible to have joy and peace and love. Go get it, man. You have an ATM machine. You'll find it in that system called the kingdom of God. That's why he says, walk by faith, not by sight. Walk in the spirit and not in your flesh. That's what he said. So whatever you have been participating with, whatever has inside of you, it's time for you to let it out and replace it with the glory of God's kingdom. Come on now, praise the Lord. Somebody. So the kingdom of God is a system. The kingdoms, you're a kingdom, I'm a kingdom, and our job is to come together and worship the Lord. The kingdom of God is not a place. It is a system. I'm looking for this place and I can't find it. Does anybody have the kingdom of God's address? <laughs> but once I find this system... I have to understand there are laws. I have to operate in those laws because if I don't operate in those laws, I'm violating the kingdom system. But you don't understand, Pastor. When nobody's around, I just eat that red light. You don't understand, Pastor. When I'm in Walmart, nobody sees me. Oh, I'm plugging Walmart. Can you send a seed, please? When I, when I go to Walmart and nobody's around, I put that candy bar in my pocket. I'm violating the system. Somebody say amen. I'm violating the system. But you don't understand. I, 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 no, you, you, you pray. You ask God. This is what you tell God. Look, I've been a cheat. I've been a liar. I've been a stinker all my life. I don't know how to walk in that system. Will you teach me? Because I really want to live and I really want to prosper and I don't want a curse to come on my family. And it's never too late to change. And you said, if you're for me, who could be against me? 
See, so things can change. You've got to learn how to operate and change those things. Okay? He, if you're weak, he'll strengthen you. If you're sad, he'll give you joy. If you're broke, he'll give you money. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Whatever you need, it is in that system. Just worship the king. Somebody worship the king. Somebody worship the king. See? So, uh, there are laws to operate in that kingdom as they are law to operate the government, the kingdom of the government. See, there's law. I have to do certain things to operate in this kingdom. And we've been operating in the kingdom of the natural so long that we come to church and we don't realize there is a kingdom, a system that God has for me. I can have whatever I need if I believe Psalm 23, verse 1. Let's write it down. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, I'm taking all my worries, all my anxiety, all my cares, I'm giving it over to him. I wasn't made to carry that. I wasn't made to be depressed. I wasn't made to look like who did it and ran. I'm called to live the life of glory. Come on, somebody. How many of you believe that you're called to live the life of glory? Then your core is holy. Your core is holy. Your core is holy. Holy is your core. You don't call everybody. So your call is holy. And write this down. And your inheritance is John 10.10. 10. John 10.10 10 is your inheritance. Let's go there when you finish writing down. What I asked you to write down. My inheritance is John 10.10. 10. We're going to read it. John 10.10 10 is my inheritance. I inherit that through Christ, what he did for me. When he died on the cross, he set me free. When, when, when he went to hell and took the key off the, off the enemy's waist, boom, give me that key. The key of David. He set us free. So John 10.10 10 is my inheritance. And the thief does three things over and 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 over. And by now you will think, what the heck? I'm allowing this frog to steal from me. Why am I allowing this guy to steal my joy? Why am I allowing this guy to mess with my head? Who I'm serving? What does they choose? Who's sitting on my kingdom? Could it be my kingdom is really a kingdom of darkness? Then we got to get his M.O. Let's get this thing right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Can you imagine only having one shirt? Can you imagine only having one pants? And they're happy! And you got... I can wear whatever I want. You know that. You, can, you open your closet, you got, ah, oh, that don't fit me right. <laughs> I like to hit him with a head, with a hammer right in the head. Ah, oh, that makes me look heavy. Ah, oh, I don't like that car. So why you have it in there? Give it away. There's a rule. If you're not using it in six months, give it away. Because you ain't going to use it. But you have the Sanford and Son mentality. A chunk yard. Come on now. Then if, if you have a junk yard and you need money, start selling your junks. Come on, someone. Oh, bless somebody with them. Number 10. 10-10. Ten, ten. The thief does not, the thief does not come except, 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 except to steal. 
to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that they may have life. Listen to that word, they may have life. This is your life. You are responsible for your life. Create the life that you want to have. If you don't like what you're going through, change it. You got the power to change it. I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That's your inheritance, an abundant life. So if I got three good tires and I got one ball tire, I, th- I thank God for them three good tires. And then sooner or later, I'll go to the junkyard and pick myself a good, good, good used tire. Or I'll pick or buy a brand new one. So, look, just get the attitude of gratitude. And your life will change. I don't want to be with you if you're depressed and oppressed. I can't help myself. The devil's a liar and Jesus is the Messiah. Yes, you can. It's your life. I'm trying to help you. You ain't got time to be sad. You ain't got time to be weary. All that focus on stupid things, well, you should be putting it on the kingdom of God. And you'll be so happy. Okay? You'll be so happy. So, when you step into the kingdom of God, David, that's an abundant life. Abundant life. See, because he says it in the book of Matthew, abundance is not what you possess in the material abundance is what you possess in the spiritual. That's why I can go to a poor country, third world country. Are you listening to me? And the guy with the one, one shirt, one pants, and the flip-flop is more richer than some of us here. Because he has joy. And here you are singing, joy like a river. Joy, you're a hypocrite. You're a liar. Stop it. You ain't got no joy like a river. You ain't got no joy like a river. If you had a joy like a river, you wouldn't even have to sing it. You just walk and everybody will say, son's in that person. You should be a world changer. And when people come with with problems, just say, look, I'm not your dumpster. Sorry. Go dump somewhere else. I'm not your dumpster. Sorry. Go dump somewhere else. And they say, well, that's rude. Say, are you going to live my death? No. Then don't try to mess up my life. By dumping garbage into me. Somebody say, amen. All right. So, you have to understand that you are a steward of this life. And you're going to have to give an account of stewardship. It's not too late now. We can, if you made mistakes, see, God uses people that make mistakes. Ha, 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 praise the Lord. And your mistakes should become mentors. Don't do it again. Move forward. Bobby, you can't call things that you... That when we start thinking, oh, man, what am I going to do? How's it going to happen? Boom, it hits you, that stress, and it knocks you down. See? Well, thank God you have a priest. And I said, what's the deal here, Lord? Yeah, they're going through their trials and tests. Tell them what I said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're in the kingdom of God. You're, you're a son. You're the son of glory. <laughs> Ain't no time for none of this nonsense. Got to go forward. And if at home they ain't right, slap them in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus, not physical slap. I said spiritual slap. Boom! And you see everybody crawl and worship the Lord. There's one thing about God's presence. When he comes in, everybody's knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Your S is off your, your chest. You ain't no longer Superman. And if you still keep that S, then you're a stupid man. Because when he comes in, he transforms everything. And that's why you want to be in the kingdom of God. You need to, uh, today, apply for citizenship in the kingdom of God. Some of you have been living here too long. Let's get your visa. Let's get your passport ready. We're going over there. Amen?
Praise the Lord. So the problem is, uh, Minister Lucy, which we're still trying to work a little bit of the world system and a little bit of God's system. It's like that song, should I stay or should I go? Well, you better go. Because if you stay, it ain't going to work. See? And if I need the kingdom of God to work in me, write that down. The kingdom of God is working in me. That's one of the keys to operating. The kingdom of God is working in me. And because the kingdom of God is working in me, it can produce everything I need. See, you think that you have to go out and seek these things. I got to get these things. I got to get these things. I got to get these things. I need these things. Well, listen here, Ricochet Rabbit. Ricochet thing. You need to seek God first. And then all those things will come to you. I'm telling you, that's the way it works. That's the way I see the great ones doing it. I say, I got it. I got it. My God, I got it. 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 Living according to the kingdom inside of me. Write that down. Living according to the kingdom that is inside of me. Now, you living according to your kingdom anyway, you just don't know it. When I look at you, I know where you're living at. I know what kingdom you're living at. And if I'm living in the kingdom inside of me, I got to make sure that I'm not working a wicked system to get ahead. See, I'm working a wicked system. I'm trying to get ahead by working a wicked system. Pastor, explain to me what a wicked system is. I come first, you come last. I seek God when I need him. I'm, I have the power to produce this wealth. Really? Everything good I have, I work hard for it. Really? That's a wicked system. I, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, 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 me. I couldn't go. Higher. I work so hard. Slap you so hard, your eyes will spin around your head. Snap out of it. This is your life. Make it. Don't let it break you. Everything else got to my attention. I, I can't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> Not you again. That's a whiner. Jesus, I love it. Somebody say Jesus three times. Jesus, 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 deliver us from temptation. Everything else matters except what really matters. What is good for my life? How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art. How great. That's what matters. Don't you know that when you're happy and you have joy, your wrinkles go away? Don't you know your heart beats better? Don't you know you smell good, you look good? You can, I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen the guy with the t-shirt and the short and the flip-flop, but he had a spirit filled with, and he says, I knew the Lord was going to answer my prayer. He sure did, baby. Those are some expensive Timberlands. <laughs> and Pastor loves them. And he put them on, it fit them just right. Tall, skinny man. Chumping. Jump in. Jump in for joy. You get something good, what you do? Hmm. About time. Don't work a wicked system to get ahead. The kingdom is in you. And Jesus 
spoke about this system. We'll go to uh, one more place and then we'll close up. We have to. I have so much to give you, but I can't. Tuesday night, my spiritual dad, my pastor, will be here, Dr. Andrew Lloyd. If you want to come out, come out. If you can, wonderful. If not, then I'll see you next Sunday. Um, go to Matthew chapter 12. Yeah. But I tell you what, if you want to come out and get blessed, come out and get blessed. You know, I have them. I, when I get them here once a month, you know, his, his schedule is so busy, Patty, honey. And I feel that's my school. I share my school with you guys. You guys don't realize. You guys shouldn't miss that. But, you know, I, I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> I can suggest, you know. That's all I can do. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to 12, and we're going to go to, th we're going to, go to 33, 1233, please. We're going to deal with these issues because we're going, to, we're going to get there. We're going to get revelation on this. We need to learn about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. How, how many of you have heard this before, this type of teaching, the kingdom of God? Anybody here? No? 1233, Dad. We need to get to that kingdom. We need to, we need to learn about this, this type of uh, living uh, in the kingdom of God. We need revelation on it. See? So that way we can be, you know what? Comfortable in the position that we're in. When you are comfortable, that means you're satisfied. Now God can give you more. But if you're, if you're stressing, anybody understand what I'm saying? If you're stressing, you can't even focus. How do you, look, when you stress, it's like you having... It's like you, you need to get to a, you need, put it this way. Hey, Ray, it's like you need to get to a certain place. But you don't have a map. You don't have the address. You know you heard about it. And if you get there, you know that you can find it. But you really don't have a clue how to get there. That brings stress into you. See what I mean? So by learning this type of teaching then, and getting the proper uh, uh, doctrine on it and, and, and principles and so on, It'll make it easy for us. So when you do go through some path, you say, you know what? Everybody look at me. You can say this. This too shall pass. I remember when I was really in trouble. It's not affecting me anymore. Every day you'll have new type of trouble. <laughs> you have to deal with it. The kingdom of God. Living in the kingdom of God. Where's the kingdom of God? Anybody give me the address? Can you point to the kingdom of God, everybody? Only me? Right here, brother, sister. This is where the kingdom of God is at. It's in your heart. Get your heart right. Get your heart right. All right, let's do it. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree, for a tree is known by its fruit. Hmm broads of viper, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you've been speaking is in your heart. Verse 35. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. So your treasure is in your heart. Your treasure is in your heart. Your kingdom is in your heart. Okay? Verse 36. But I say to you that if for every idle word man may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Verse 37. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So what you've been speaking? I don't think I'm going to make, jeez, I, I, I don't know. Stop it. That's not kingdom talk. Okay? That's poo-poo talk. Remember the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 27. Just write it down. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 27, Reverend. Pro, Proverbs 18, 27, Minister. Proverbs 18, 27. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. 
We got to change this conversation, Ray. We got to start talking positive. Whatever mess we're in, let's talk positive. We're coming out. But don't talk positive with a bunch of negative people. Because they'll get you right back into the kingdom of darkness. You're going to the wrong. Hey, guess what? I'm coming out. No, you're not. You know my Uncle Bill. What happened to him? I'm not your Uncle Bill. I'm a son of glory. Somebody say, I'm a daughter of glory. I'm a son of glory. No in-betweens in here. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right? Good? Viewers, the kingdom of God is inside of you. And Jesus spoke about this system inside of you. According to Matthew 12, 33 and 35, he said the treasure. What's in your treasure? If you don't like what's in your treasure, chess, you can change it by putting the right things inside in that treasure chest. I love you, and I'll see you real soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.